Hello everyone, this is Yael Hakmanim. I'm the founder of Research Hub and also working as an associate professor at the University of Southeastern Norway. There are last, in the last few months, I have seen so many videos on YouTube about the use of different AI tools in literature reviews. First of all, I see that majority of the videos are made by people who are not really academic professors or well-known professors, so you have to be really cautious about what you listen to and what you follow. But here I decided to give a try with some of the helps we can get uh, in literature reviews, especially the keyword search. The keyword search of a literature review is one of the most crucial things because based on the search you do, uh, your final outcome uh, of the literature review will be totally different, okay? So now here, the search I'm trying to practice actually, I'm going to write a paper about risk factors um, for remote control operations in autonomous shipping, okay? And nowadays I also do a systematic literature search in most of my empirical studies as well. So not only the literature review studies, but in the literature review section of most of my empirical studies, I try to do a systematic literature search and find the most relevant 15, 20 articles. So here I'm giving this command in chat GPD that I want to find, I know that I have a spelling mistake, but anyway, I want to find the risk assessment factors for remote control operations, for IMO degree three maritime autonomous ships, and what should be my Boolean keywords search in Scopus. First of all, here you see, you have to have a very clear idea about your research question and about the topic that you are going to search. Where are you going to search? So all these things, you know, if you just make a random search command here, uh, in ChatGPT or any other generative AI tool, you will get a sloppy response. But here you see, I mentioned that I want risk assessment factors for remote control operations with degree three autonomous ships. I want Boolean keyword search in a Scopus database. So you have to be really specific. This is something I realize more and more with the generative generative AI tools. You the 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 better knowledge you have already about the topic the better your outcome will be and the search will be. So you already need to have very good knowledge to make really good outcome from the tools that we are using. Okay, if you're just randomly making some search, most likely it will not lead you to a good, uh, good, good outcome. So after doing that, we got this suggested text. Okay, and we also have explanations. So this is really cool because whenever we do search, we need to have search related to different themes in the search. So here for risk assessments, we are using these three keywords. For remote operations, we are using these keywords. For autonomy, we are using these keywords. For maritime context, we are using these keywords. Okay, and then here we are using quotation marks, especially when we have more than one term like here, I'm on degree three or remote control operations here. We, you, when you have more than one term, you have to have quotations mark. Otherwise, so for example, here with remote control operations, if I do not use that quotation mark, it will search for anything with remote, anything with control, anything with operations, anything with a combination of these two remote control or control operations and so on, right? So we have to use the quotation mark to get only the search terms about remote control operations. And then here, it also gives us the uh, gives us how it is combining them. So here you see similar terms are in one bracket combined with R and different themes are combined with AND, okay? As you can see here. And then we are using the parenthesis properly to actually follow the Boolean logic. This is very important to use the parenthesis in the right places. I have reviewed so many articles where this Boolean expression is not properly done. But now, are we happy with this? I am somewhat happy, but this is not perfect. Just by looking at it based on my previous knowledge, I can say that most likely we'll get no articles and this is not really perfect. So let's give it a try. And the Boolean logic is actually same for whether you're going to search in Scopus, Web of Science, Dimensions, or any other academic databases. But let's copy this code. Let's try in Scopus. So here we are in Scopus, I have logged in. So here we have many options for doing the search. Normally, I recommend to use always author, title, abstract, and keywords. If you're doing in Web of Science, pick topic. Do not do alt fields. 
then you will have too many articles. It will be out of control. If you are looking for someone's articles, particular author, then you choose the authors and so on. But in our case, we, we are more interested in the topic. So we select article title, abstract, and keywords. I can just copy paste my search string here. I am expecting no outcome here. Okay, let's see what we get. I haven't tried with this before. Let's see, it should give us zero. Uh, luckily, it is giving us one. So that's actually I expected zero as I said, but luckily we are getting at least one. But with one, we are of course not going to do any literature review. You cannot do any literature review with only one, okay? So now what I'm going to see is I'm going to try to refine this, okay? I'm going to try to make a better version of the keyword search here. I'm going to use Word uh, to while working on the refinement. You might want to use maybe Notepad as well. So it doesn't matter what you use, whether you're using Excel, Word, or whatever you are using, doesn't really matter. But I'm going to use Word for now. So first of all, the changes I'm going to make is I'm going to remove these ones from here. Degree three, degree, you know, the IMO degree three and so on. I don't need that. I just need autonomous ships, maritime autonomy and so on. So here you see, if I have autonomous ships and maritime autonomy, I don't really need also this part. You know, it's not important for me because autonomous ships and maritime autonomy, these both are reflected into the maritime domain anyway. So I don't need that. So we can actually see some improvement with this. Okay, let's give it a try. I'm just going to paste it. So we got now three documents, some improvement, but three documents is very little for a good literature review section. Okay. And it's actually good to see all the articles are by people I already know. So I'm happy to see that. But now we are going to do some more improvements here. So here, risk assessment, risk factors, safety assessment. Here, first of all, let's put here a star mark. Instead of S, we put a star mark. So we get risk factor. Also, we get risk factors, both of them. Let's do the same thing here. Remote control operations here. Let's put a star mark as well. So we get remote control operation, remote control operations. Remote operation, remote control systems. Let's do the same here. We put a star mark. Now, it might improve a little bit. There, there, there is still much room for improvement, but it might improve a little bit. So I'm pasting my search here, search. No, no improvement really. We still get three documents. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add maybe some other relevant terms. One of the best way is actually to look into the keyword section here and to see if we can find some keyword terms from here that we can use. Okay, that's the like most systematic way of doing it. Remote control ships. Maybe we should have these as well. Remote control ships. Do we have it here? I don't think so. Remote operation, we can say R. Remote control, here, this one. I also know that we use this term called shore control. I'm putting that here as well. For autonomous ships, I know, of course, we are using autonomous ship, maritime autonomy, but we also use terms such as un unmanned ship or unmanned vessel or crew, crew less ship. Let's see if this improves a little bit. We are still getting, no, now, now it improved quite a bit. We have now 19 documents. Actually now I'm pretty satisfied because this is the empirical study. I already have 19 documents. 
uh, I'm going to limit to art. Um, I'm going to limit to all the articles. I want to exclude the conference paper. So limit to articles only. Uh, and then I am also going to yeah, select here article. And then I am most likely also going to limit it by limited by year. So let's say 2020 to rest of the years. I have a spelling mistakes here, it seems. No, not really. I'm going, yeah, something happened here. Let's see if I can reset this. I'm going to copy it again, create less shape and so on. Let's go to scoop us once again. We have this, I'm going to make the search. We can say we want only from 2020. We have now 18 articles, articles, journal, limit to. So now here, these 13 articles should be actually looking at the titles. I can already say that this looks very relevant for what I want to do, okay? So this is how you see, you can actually do a literature search using uh, chat, some help from ChatGPT and uh, make it a very good literature search. But the, the thing is, as you have seen, that I have paid a lot of attention when refining the search. So this is something you need to do. You need to have some knowledge of the context. You need to have a good understanding of your themes in the research terms, you know, and the synonymous terms and so on. So this is good. If I were to do a systematic literature review or I were to do a a uh, bibliometric literature review, I would actually expand my search even more so that I have like 50 or 100 articles. But in this case, this is for empirical study. I need only very core related studies on this topic. And I will also like to share that I have a playlist on my YouTube where you will actually find some videos on my thoughts about using ChatGPT. So the chat, the, the playlist is called ChatGPT and Generative AI. Here you will find some guidelines on use of generative AI in academic writing and, and, and research. Good luck with your work. Bye-bye for now.